the 16th of April. We're into day 21 of lockdown, and today, wasn't it, was supposed to be the day when this was lifted. That's what the president originally said when he implemented the lockdown, but then we know subsequently he's rolled that forward until the end of April, and I'm under no illusions that this is not going to continue into uh, May and beyond, at least for public gatherings and impact on educational institutions and so forth as well. So I think that's where we're at. That's, that's our reality, at least for the foreseeable future. And I think it's caused problems for us. Uh, there's been disruption in terms of life and living and work and education, uh, even financially for those that are on a no work, no pay kind of deal as well. I think people are struggling and people within our own church community are struggling as well. And we need to just be mindful of that. But uh, I was in a on an online Zoom meeting yesterday with the faculty and adjunct faculty of Baptist Theological College, just talking about the implications for the first semester and exam time and how we're going to handle uh, those uh, issues and so forth. And at the end of that meeting, as we spent time in prayer together online, one of my colleagues, a pastor of a local Baptist church, used this phrase that uh, what is a problem for us is painful for others. What's a problem for us is painful for others. And folk, we dare not, we dare not forget the staggering, staggering implications of what's actually happening around the globe. And that may well particularly affect us, even in terms of our own city and our own community and our own church moving forward as well. Because there's pain. There's very, very real pain. I uh, was on an online webinar last week uh, with a pastor from Italy. Uh, and his people in his church are literally just getting phoned from the mortuary going, your loved one died and the cremations happened. It's that cold. It's that clinical. Uh, because of the just the mass and the volume of uh, people that are, are dying. And I think we're starting to see the same to, to a degree in the UK, particularly in the North America and the US as well, just staggering numbers uh, of, of daily daily deaths and so forth. And there's, there's pain. And folk, the issue for us is how do we, how do we relate to that? And I would, I would just exhort you on two fronts, maybe early this morning, as we're looking at that, that even from a distance, even though they may well in some cases be nameless people, how do we relate? Because people are battling. I had a conversation on WhatsApp a few days ago with a colleague of mine on the other side of the world whose elderly mother died, and they weren't able to be with her. They weren't able to phone. They weren't able to be with her in her last hours and days. And even when she did die, the family weren't able to connect and grieve normally and have a funeral. There's pain. What, what for us is a problem in terms of lockdown is causing significant pain uh, for others uh, in other parts of the world, and it may well become our reality as well. So can I exhort you? If you know people, pray for them. But I think just pray for those communities, pray for the work of the gospel, and pray prayers that are God-focused, that just honor the bigness and the majesty and the sovereignty and the eternal, wise, sovereign justice and righteousness of God. Pray prayers that are gospel-saturated, that in and through this, that Christ might be exalted, that the lost might come to faith, if they're rescued from COVID-19 and yet still go to hell, we've missed the boat somehow. Pray prayers that are others-centered, that it's not all about us and our issues, but that, that we're actually consumed with just the bigger world issues that are around us as well. And into that as well, give thought to how to care. It may well be far removed from us at the moment, but what do we do even in terms of our own community, and particularly our own church community, where people are struggling. Uh, they might not be sick, they might not be bereaved, but they're struggling in terms of life and living. And uh, maybe the, the illness and the sickness will still come. I just want to reflect very, very briefly on a Philippians chapter 4. I uh, preached on it a few years ago, and I just want to go back there and read to you Philippians chapter 4, uh, picking up at verse 10. If I can find it in my Bible, it would be helpful. The Apostle Paul says the following, uh, picking up in verse 10, I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but at no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low and I know how to abound. In every, any and every situation, circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And don't miss what follows. Yet it was kind of you to share my trouble. It was kind of you to share my trouble. This church got involved in the life and the ministry of the Apostle Paul and in his pain, in his distress, in his affliction, 
in his need, they sought to reach out to him. Folk, I think that's a challenge for us. How? And I can't even give you the answer. I don't even know how per se. But we need to just be pleading with the Lord for grace and wisdom to feel the need, to see the need, and to look at opportunities where we can to reach out to the need, particularly in our own local church community. Isn't that what Paul says to the churches of Galatia? Do good to all, but especially to the household of faith. Where are our own people struggling? What about the shuttings? I mean, I, we're all shutting to a degree at the moment as well, aren't we? But the, the elderly, the sick, the vulnerable, those that are hurting, those that are lonely, those that are just out of fellowship with other people. And what do we do even in their pain to reach out? What might be a problem for us is incredibly painful for others. It's be mindful of that. And by God's grace, he seek to be a vessel of the love and mercy of Christ in real ways as the Lord grants us wisdom.